Hi everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired, and in this new tutorial series, I'm going to be showing you how you can program in ARM assembly. So whether you're a software developer working in really low-level code, trying to create the most efficient programs possible, or you're a reverse engineer and you need to be able to read and understand assembly code, the best way is just to dive in and start trying to program in assembly itself so you can understand the whole instruction set architecture and how each different instruction works. What we're going to be using today is ARM v7 which is going to be a 32-bit version of ARM. And there are a few different ways that you can follow along. So you might be running an x86-based host machine. So don't worry, there are ways that you can still work with ARM, even though your processor architecture might not exactly match. So the first option is going to be creating a virtual machine in Azure. And this is one option. You can just select the ARM64 instruction set architecture. And this way it works with Ubuntu server. And ARM64 is going to be backwards compatible with the 32-bit version of ARM that we're going to be looking at today. And remember, don't worry, you're only going to be paying for the time that the virtual machine is actually running, not the time when it's off. So another option is going to be CPU later. And this is available online for free, and this lets you emulate the ARM v7 instruction set architecture. And this is really nice, and it allows you to set breakpoints and step through the code and see what the registers are doing. But it is limited in that the software interrupt command is not recognized. So if you're trying to do that to trigger software interrupts, and we'll get into what that is a little later on in this video, then that's actually going to be limited and not quite work. But you will still be able to understand all of the instructions that are not software interrupts and see how they work. The final option is you could use QueenU on your x86 host machine, and you can still emulate that instruction set architecture, even if it doesn't match the host. This is just a little limited for performance. So without further ado, let's get into actually programming our assembly code. So I'm going to be using the first option today, which is the ARM64 virtual machine running in the cloud. And I already have this up and running. So if you're running the same thing as me, one thing that you'll need to install before being able to follow along is a particular GCC package. So if you're uh -oh. running on Ubuntu, you can just run sudo apt get install gcc dash arm dash linux and then it's going to be GNU eabi. And I've already gone ahead and run this, so I'm just going to hit Control c here. But you'll just need to install this package before you can assemble the file that you're creating, as well as create the new executable file. So let's get into actually creating the source code assembly file that we're going to be using. So I'm going to be using Vim today, so vi, and I'll create a new file, hello. Dot s, but feel free to use the text editor of your choice, but I will be saying all the key bindings that I'm using so that you can feel free to follow along as well. So this is going to be our new assembly file that's going to hold our assembly source code. So what we need to do is we need to start adding our actual instructions here. But for some background, I'm going to go back over to CPU later, since this gives a really nice view of the registers and everything. So if you look on the left hand side, this is going to show all of the different registers that are available to you. So if you're wondering what a register is, it's just a very small memory location that's located physically very close to the processor. So they're going to be really fast to use and they hold a lot of different temporary values. So if you're writing a program, you're going to be accessing these a lot since it's faster to access these than, for example, disk or main memory. And if you look at the top six registers, R0 through R6, these are going to be our general purpose registers that we can use throughout our program. And then R7 is going to be a special register that you're going to want to keep in mind when we're performing that software interrupt call. And this is going to hold the actual system call number that tells the processor which system call we're actually targeting, and which one we want to run. 
And if you're noticing these registers, these are going to be hexadecimal values right here. So if you see there's eight values in hexadecimal, and these are going to be four bits each, which gives us a total of 32 bits per register. So if you hear me mention that this is a 32-bit architecture, then these are going to be 32 bits for the registers for their total size. Moving on down, just a couple other registers that might be of interest when we get started. It's going to be the stack pointer, which is going to point to the next available location on the stack. So for example, if these general purpose registers are not enough space for you, then we store a lot of different values that the program is using. Uh, for example, strings or arrays on the stack as well. So we can use this location as well to store values. Finally, I'll take a look at the program counter. PC right here is going to be incremented for every single instruction that we're running. And I can show you when we're running in CPU later at the end of this video. And we can watch this number increasing as we step over instructions. So now we have looked at the registers. This is going to be kind of the bare bones of an assembly program. So I'm going to go back to my Azure Virtual Machine and we'll just start writing our assembly code. And it's going to look something like this, but we'll write this ourselves in the Azure VM. So we already have our file up. So I'm going to do I to insert into our file. And we're going to start with dot global and then underscore start. So the dot global is making sure that this value, this start value, is available outside of our program. So this is going to be helpful, helpful when we're assembly assembling this program. And this underscore start right here is going to be a label. So if you're a programmer, think of this like a function name. This is basically just labeling a certain area in memory. And if you reference this, it's actually just going to give you the value of that memory location that it's pointing to. OK, so we have our start to the program and we'll do dot section dot text. And this is going to be the actual section inside of the file that holds the uh, instructions of the program. So this is compared to, for example, the dot data section, which might hold different data that the program also needs, for example, strings or arrays or any different value that's stored in the data section. This has our actual assembly code. So now that we have declared our start as global and started our dot text section, we can actually define the code that's going to go under this start label. So we'll just put underscore start to match that. Then we need a colon. And we want to actually start adding some code here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do something really simple. We're just going to exit the program. If you are a programmer, you might be thinking, Every time you learn something, you start with hello world. Why aren't we printing hello world to the screen? If I was teaching you C, I would do that. But assembly, this is actually a lot more complicated than you might think. So we're going to start with something really simple and just exit the program and looks, look at the exit code returned by the program. So what we need to do is we need to use our special register R7 over here, we need to pass it a value that's going to be used by the kernel to actually call the particular system call that we're trying to use. If we want to see what value needs to get passed to register R7, we can actually look at these nice Chromium OS docs over here, which are really nice for all the different processor architectures. For example, they have x86-64, the 32-bit version of ARM we're going to be looking at today. So I have 64-bit version of ARM and 32-bit version of x86. And I'm going to be clicking on this. And I'm going to make this link available in the comments section of this tutorial. So this is just my favorite overall guide for using system calls and documenting all of the different states the registers need to be in and what the different arguments are for. 
So now we're in our 32-bit version of ARM. We go over to the right and we want to see what R7, which is our special register. And we're looking for the exit syscode right here. So this looks like we need to pass the value one to the R7 register in order to signify that we're looking at the exit syscall. And if you look over to the right hand side, that arg0 right here, this is gonna be the error code. So this is actually the code that is returned from the program once it exits. And we'll show you how we can print that to the screen after we actually write this code. So now we know R7 needs to hold one, and then we'll put our desired error code in the R0 register, which is gonna be our first argument. So what we need to do, we'll go into our program and we're gonna use something called the move instruction. So I'm gonna type move, and then we'll do R0 first. Remember, this is gonna be our exit code. I'm gonna put the value 42 into that. So 42, the answer to life, the universe, and everything. And if you look at the official instructions for ARMv7 right here, you can actually see that what we're doing is we're calling the move immediate instruction right here. And this is going to do move, and then it's gonna take the destination register. So the register that we want to move our value to, and then it's going to take an immediate value which is basically just like a constant value, then you signify that it's a constant value by adding the pound symbol right there before the number. So we've done that. And if you wanted to make this a hexadecimal number, all you need to do is add zero X and then it's gonna be in hex. I'm just gonna do decimal today. And then we want to add our actual syscall so what we need to do is we need to do another move instruction. Remember our special purpose R7 register and the value for exit was going to be the constant one. So right here. So we're just gonna do that. We're gonna do pound one and then the command for the software interrupt to signify uh -oh. to the kernel that we want to actually pass execution on over to that to handle our syscall. It's gonna be SWI for software interrupt. And then this value is ignored, but we can just add it anyway. And if you're curious about the software interrupt reference, you can come over to the official ARM documentation and see we have the software interrupt followed by the immediate value. And this immediate value is actually just ignored according to the docs right here. All right, so it looks like we have our completed program. So I'm gonna hit escape to get out of insert mode, and then do colon WQ to save my program. And then I can see there's my source code right there. And what we need to do now is we actually need to assemble this code. So I'm going to do arm Linux, GNU E ABI, and AS for assemble. And then this is gonna be our source code file, hello.s-o for output file. And then this is gonna be hello.o. So this is gonna be an object file. So it has the assembled code, but it's not directly um, executable by the processor yet. So we need one more step to get an actual executable file. So we'll add this. And then the next, you see we have our hello.s and hello.o. So we need to do arm linux gnu eabi dash gcc. And then we'll take in our hello.o object binary. And then we'll do output. And then that's going to be the name of our executable. And we got an error. So this is actually trying to import the std lib. So all we need to do is dash no std lib. And there we go. So if we do ls again, we can see we have a new executable file right here. So if I do file, hello, this is an elf binary, which stands for executable and linkable format. So this is gonna be the executable form of a Linux binary. And if we want to do by 
hello. You can see that this has the elf magic bytes up here. So that's how you can recognize an elf binary. So colon Q and then exclamation point in order to exit this file without saving our changes. And we should just be able to do dot slash hello in order to run this program. So you might think nothing happened, but let's check the exit code of the program. So all we need to do is echo dollar sign question mark and then see that was our 42 value, that immediate value that we passed in to the R0 register, and that is printed as the exit code. So now we showed how we could run this inside of our Azure virtual machine. I'm just going to take this same code and I'm going to put it into our CPU later just to quickly show how that works. I'm going to copy this. And we'll paste that in over here. And all we need to do in order to run this is we need to hit compile and load. And then this is going to show our instructions as we're running them. So we can just do step over. And if you see this R0 register that we passed the immediate value 42, which is going to be 2A in hex, gets moved on over to the R0 register. And then we're going to do step over again. And we see the immediate value one is passed into our R7 register. And I'm going to stop that right here and go back to the code. And if we look over to the left hand side here, we also see our program counter, which is getting increased for every single instruction that we're running. So if we just take a look at that real quick, you see it gets set to zero when we're first starting. So that's going to be the first point of the program. And then if we do step over, it's going to go to the next instruction. So it's going to get increased by four. And then if we do step over again, we're pointing at the next instruction, so it's increased by four again. So that's how we're keeping track of the next instruction to get executed inside of our program. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone. In this tutorial, we looked at how we could write a very simple program in ARM assembly. And we wrote that on an Azure virtual machine that was running an ARM64 host. And we also took a look at how we could run the same program in CPU later. We also learned what the move instruction was when it relates to moving an immediate or constant value into a processor register. And then finally, we looked at the software interrupt instruction and saw how we could pass a value to the R7 register to signify which system call we actually wanted our processor to run. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, and I'll catch you in the next tutorial.